okay so ritam uh, first of all welcome i welcome you on the day 3 of the workshop of python manchu and we'll start with day 3 uh, ritam so yeah okay. it's, we are good to go and participants will be joining in between also and guys uh, we request you to just put down your questions in the chat box wherever needed okay so ritam yeah you can just continue with the session and uh, yeah we'll be just starting okay that's great so <clears throat> this is actually the solution of uh, yesterday's assignment that i gave you so all i do is uh, take a uh, number as an input and then check if uh, it's modulo 5 is equals to 0 and it's modulo 6 is equals to 0 and it's modulo 7 equals to 0 then i print i am happy now uh, notice these uh, double quotes that i put in here that's because uh, i wanted my output to have a single quote right so i could have either, either i could either put uh, everything inside a double quote or i could have escaped it anyways fine so here's the approach that i have used and let's just check so if i enter something like 10 so it says uh, backslash n that would be backslash n because the parity uh, 210 is divisible by 5 6 and 7 so if there are not uh, there ain't uh, any more, uh, uh, more questions regarding the assignments so just let me know if you have any doubts uh, regarding anything that i have taught till now yeah that would be mohit uh, to go to the next line you could use something called the new line character that's that would be backslash n uh actually if you have to pay attention then i'm just overwriting on the same jupyter notebook again and again right so there uh, would be no point of sharing it anyways it won't make sense So anything else, or uh, I guess I can uh, move on right now. Okay. So now uh, let's uh, learn about something else. Let's learn about something called the loops right now. So yeah. Now we have learned about the if else statements, right? So now what if I want to do something uh, like let's say you put in a number, and I want to check if that uh, number satisfy a certain condition or something so i take a number from you i take an input from you guys and then i say that i print something let's say i just print the number again but just in case the number is minus 1 i stop and if it's not minus 1 if it is not minus 1 i keep on doing it right so what would be the lehman solution of doing that so the lehman solution would be first i take an input from you guys then i check it again and then i check it again then again i take an input from you guys then i do it again and all so on right so it it, it would go something like x equals then i would check if x equals to equals to minus 1 i would print something like by right and uh, that's it then again what what's going to happen if i press that it's going to be fine if i press like minus 1 it says by now if it if it's not by right so i want to cont uh, continue it i want to uh, do it over and over and over again right so if i do i have to do it manually i'll have to write something like this like i have copy this a bunch of times so you see uh, the, i would have to do something like this right keep on writing the code again and again again and again indefinitely because i won't know when exactly you are going to press minus 1 or something so 
so it's going to uh, uh, keep on going indefinitely now i don't want to do that right uh, that's not uh, how we do stuff in any programming language and uh, not in python as well so right now we are going to learn about loops and there are basically two types of loops in python the first would be the um, while loop the second would be a for loop okay now let's uh, start with the while loop first so while loop basically takes in a condition just like an if else statement like you pass an if uh, a statement in if else it basically works with booleans as well and it would uh, keep on executing anything that is inside it unless the condition becomes false so let's say um x equals int cgt so i take a uh, number in here then i say while x not equals to <clears throat> minus 1 sorry okay and i just in, and now you see that i get indented indentation basically means that i am inside this while loop right now <coughs> yeah i'm uh, i'm sorry just uh, not on the top of my health right now so now what i want to do is i want to say something like print okay you entered x and then i want to do it again and again so i want to take the input again and again right great let's try this out so if i set 10 it says you enter 10 and then gives give prompts me for the input again i couldn't keep on entering something else and once i enter minus 1 it stops so here's how a while loop works basically so you pass in a condition in here and as long as it's true uh your code will uh keep on executing so anything that's inside this will keep on executing and as soon as this uh, you know condition becomes false you'll uh, get out come out of the loop any questions regarding while loop guys i i really hope i'm not boring you or um you know i'm audible to you guys yeah okay so now there's one thing that you have to if we want to type minus 1 uh pankaj i didn't actually get your question Could you be uh, more specific, more clear? Uh, exactly what what you want to do. Now, uh, one thing that you have to take care of: there are certain uh, conditions that can never be uh, false, right? So, let's say a condition something like one equals three equals to uh, one. It's never going to be false because I know one is always equals to one. So, in those conditions, in those conditions, you'll encounter something called an infinite loop. and let's actually see what an infinite loop loop is so i'll delete all this code and i'll just print them i'll say inside an infinite loop minus 1 may stop uh, anch minus 1 may stop isliye ho gaya tha because uh, here is our condition we said while x not equals to minus 1 jab tak x uh, minus 1 ke barabar nahi hota tab tak ye cheez execute honi chahiye right now let's uh, take an uh, condition that's always true so that would be 1 less than 2 that's always true right <clears throat> so now if you see that this condition 1 less than 2 is always true so i'm going to be inside an infinite loop now if you see it keeps it keeps going it goes forever and ever and ever it's not going to end and at some point of time it it could even crash your system or something but yeah it's never going to end right 
So you you'll have to either close it manually or uh, just terminate the program altogether. Uh, Sangeeta, it would be more uh, use. It would be more helpful if, helpful if you could actually uh, specify a use case. I don't actually get uh, about how do you want to print a number on a next line. I suppose you you want to do something like this maybe. So it would print something like this. Okay. So that was the while loop. And there's another way that you can use the while loop basically. So let's uh, now try to print everything, uh, every number between one to 10 or something. Okay. So let's just uh, print all the numbers between one to 10 or one to 100, whatever you want. So let's take a variable, let's say I, and it's gonna be uh, in, equals to one initially. Then I wanna say while I let's say is less than or equals to 10. So it would go from one to 10. I want to print I. And then I want to say that I equals to I plus one. Okay. Let's see what happens. So we get all these numbers between one to 10. I hope it's uh, pretty clear. All I did was uh, taking a, take a number I, make sure that it's always less than 10. So unless uh, and until it's less than 10, I'm going to print it and then increment it by one. Okay, Mohit. Uh, okay, I'll uh, come back to you if I actually get your question right now. Let's uh, just uh, finish it and I'll come back to you if it's fine with you. So I hope it's pretty simple, clear. Now you see this uh, I equals to I plus one, there's a shorthand way of doing it. You could say, instead of writing all this, like I equals to I plus one, you could just say that I plus equals to one. It's just a shorthand operator. It basically, it's basically equals to I equal, I equals to I plus one, right? If I make it hundred or something, you see it goes up to 100. So there's this another way you can use the while loops for. Now, keep remember, uh, to change the value of i actually, else uh, you'll uh, encounter an infinite loop like uh, we discussed as before. If the value of i never changes, then the loop would be infinite. Yeah, you could uh, always uh, try to print a table of uh, a number as well. Right. So you could try to print a table, let's say print a table of two. So I could say something like print, I'm gonna use an F string. So I could say two multi, okay. I could say something like two multiplied I equals to I. And then just increment I by one. So I plus equals to one basically means I equals to I plus one. So it would look something something like this. And you could even make this too dynamic by taking an input instead of just uh, typing in two, we could take an input from the user as well, prompt the user for an input and go on, right? So there's this way, you can use the while loop. So while loop would be pretty simple, I hope. Uh, let me know if uh, you have any question. Or else I'll come back come to something else. Now, uh, in my previous code, if you have seen it, I've written something like this, an, a hash and all. Now, hash uh, is basically comment. Now, it, it's a comment. Now, what exactly is a comment? A comment is a line of code that doesn't actually get executed. Right? So, anything that you write inside a comment, uh, no, you can't actually use the plus plus operator. It's not supported in Python. For anyone uh, who is uh, from a other different programming language background, plus plus or minus minus, that increment and decrement operator is not supported in Python. Yeah. So anything, uh, you know, I think that uh, uh, that is a hash in front of it is basically a comment and it won't be executed. So I, let's say I have this uh, huge code. And now if I put a hash in front of each and every line and I try to execute it, you see it, nothing happens because these are all now commented out 
so your uh, python basically ignores all that so anything that has a hash in front of it python ignores all that it may be uh, difficult to wrap your head around if you are from a c or c++ background or something pikachu it's uh, the opposite it's the opposite it's i plus equals to 1 if you do something like i equals to plus 1 then it would assign i to the value of uh, just one a positive one right <laughs> so that's how you type in comments and now what exactly are comments for comments uh, could be something that you want you to uh, for your understanding let's say you are writing this <coughs> yeah let's say you are writing this huge code uh, today and uh, there are a lot of lines like let's say 100 or 200 lines of code and tomorrow you come back to your code and you uh, don't actually know what's happening or you maybe you give it to me i can't understand what your code does so you put uh, put a uh, put a little memos or notes for yourself and you do it using comments now com comments can be single line using a hash or they can even be multi line so multi line comments uh, are basically put between triple quotes so anything you write inside this uh, would be a multi line comment okay so basically comments are these uh, blocks of code that never get executed and are just for your own reference <clears throat> any questions from your side i know i'm uh, going a little, little bit faster than yesterday but we have we have a lot to cover and i hope that you guys are already understand understanding a lot of stuff <clears throat> so anything else or shall i just uh, proceed further okay so now let's uh, jump to another loop that would be the for loop there are only two loops in python for and while uh, there might be some guys who, again, from a programming background, might uh, might have heard about do while loop and all. So do while loop doesn't exist in Python, and you might have seen that I already also you know skip something known as the switch cases. Anyone who is not from uh, who hasn't learned any other programming language, you could ignore this part, right? But uh, for guys who who have uh, who are acquainted with JavaScript, Java, C plus plus C or something, you might see that. Uh, you might know that there's the concept of switch cases as well so there is no concept of switch cases in python no while no do while loop no switch cases so let's see uh, how a for loop work so for loop is basically used as an iterator it's uh, used on an iterator and then it uh, you know just uh, logically does what you are and Okay, it's my word. Now I could do something like for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for let's say letter in word, I could do something like print letter, and and it would do something like this. It would print the each individual letters. Switch case was just a fancier version of if, if else, right? Pikachu. It was just a fancier version of uh, if else. Anything you could do with a uh, switch case, you could do it with if else. And it, if else actually has a you know less time complexity if you go down that path. <clears throat> so now, what does this mean? Let's say I have this word. So this word, this string, this string. If you see. Every string is basically a collection of characters. A character is one single word or letter, what you, whatever you want to call it. So H would be one single letter, or uh, in the same way H E L L O. They are all one single characters, and a string is basically, um, and a string is basically a collection of characters. Uh, so it's an iterable. So I could do something like for letter in word. I could print all the letters. And now you have to take care in mind. You have to, you know, understand this letter. Letter is not some reserved keyword in Python or something. You could have written X and it would have worked fine. So this is a variable. This is a, you know, on fly variable that you have created. And 
here's the actual uh, variable that you're working with. Here's the actual word. Now, for some reason, you see that uh, by default, the behavior of print is to print everything in, on the next line. So what if I don't want to do that actually? What if I want them to be in the same, uh, in the same line or something? In that, in that case, you have this uh, extra property that you can add to your print function. It's called the end. So you write something like comma, then end. And then you specify your own end to print function. Let's say, let's say space. Execute it and now you see it prints out H, then prints out the space, right? The default value of n for a print is n line, the new line character. But you could add your own. Let's say I add three asterisks. So it would do something like this. So here's my here's uh, where my first print statement gets executed. Here's my first print statement. From here to here actually. So just in case you want, uh, don't want the de default uh, behavior of print statement, you can overwrite it uh, by using this end attribute to this uh, print uh, function, right? So any questions? Or I'll, uh, you know, here, go on with the for loop uh, for a little while longer. It's not a semicolon, uh, it's a colon actually. Semicolon is this symbol, colon is this symbol. And yeah, if you want, uh, if you actually, if you want the next uh, statements to be a part uh, of that block, to be a part of that block, then you have to indent it with the one tab space. Okay, so now it's great. It's great uh, working with, um, you know, strings and all using for loop but can we do exactly what we do, uh, did with while loop using for loop can we print all the numbers between 1 to 10 or 1 to 100 and the small answer is yes yes you can of course you can right and this uh, it even looks up uh, it even looks way simpler for that and if we write int input a number it start executes but i need to continue the program um Mohit, I, again i didn't get your question like uh right actually get your question so let's try to be more specific this time uh, could you just uh, tell me exactly what uh, you're trying to do and uh, i guess i i'll try my best to help you something else so right now we can do something for, let's say I in. Now, instead of um, a variable or a string, I'm gonna use something called a range function. A range function is ba uh, basically provide, uh, provides you with a iterable of numbers, just like a string was an iterable of characters. So I could say something like for I in range, then specify my range in here. In time. Okay. So here's how you can print um, numbers between a certain range. Make it one understanding. So it prints out one to ten. Now here's what you have to keep in mind. You see. Uh, using this range function, range function, what I did is I type in 11 in here, but it only prints up to 10. So one is included and 11 is excluded. Anything that is less than 11, it goes up to less than 11, right? So it goes from one to less than 11, that would be 10. Yeah, upper limit is excluded. Okay, so you can do it with multiple numbers as well. Let's say 20 comma 31 or something. So now you see it prints from 20, 20 to 30. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's, that's really great. But what if I don't want to do, do something like this? Um, what if uh, I'm only wanna, I wanna skip numbers uh, 
with an addition of two or something. Like I only want to print something like two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, or something like that. So I could say that I want to start from zero, go to twenty, and then I could pass in a third argument that would be the step size. Now you see it goes from zero to and so on. So it starts from zero, and then instead of printing one, it prints out two because this step size is two. Now if you omit this step size. If you omit this argument, the default step size would be one, so you could uh, uh, you know skip it. So, but you but if you want want don't want this behavior, if you want to overwrite it, that's when uh, you need to start, you know provide five hundred step size as well. You could uh, provide a step size of five as well, so it goes something like this. Okay, and in this way, you could even uh, count in reverse. So let's say I start from ten, sorry, ten. I want to go to zero, um, and have a step size of minus one. It will go something like this: ten, nine, eight, seven, nine, nine. Okay. I hope it's uh, totally fine with you guys. Okay. Uh, now, Mohit, uh, back to your question. Could you let me know what exactly are you, are you using? Uh, are you using IDLE or any other, you know, ID or maybe Jupyter Notebook or something? Yeah, you can uh, use end in uh, anywhere right now. So now we learned it. So you can use end anywhere right now. Let's say it follows it by four x's or something. So it goes something like this. Okay, you're writing it in Python. Okay, no. Okay, Mohit, I know you are using Python. Uh, uh, like we are all using Python right now. I just want to know the ID or where exactly you are writing it or executing your code. Because uh, just in case you are writing in something like a terminal or uh, you know the uh, ideally, it won't actually. It only executes uh, one by one. It's it just interprets your code uh, right away. I don't change the color of number. Okay, I don't change it. The ID automatically does that for me. Any smart ID does that. Okay, so any question for uh, regarding for loop? That's how for loops work. Um, the important part in for loop is the range function. So I could write something for i and range. And let's say anything. So I could start from one and go up to 80 or something with a step size of let's say six. In case of range function, three numbers are not working. Make sure that you have put commas and all, right? And just make sure that the step size is correct as well. If you try something like this, it will actually never uh, reach 80, right? Because the step size is in negative. It would throw you an error or something. So, any question? Can you start programming Kali? Dude, it totally depends on you. Right now, I'm programming in a Macintosh system. Some are, uh, you know, programming in Windows or something. Yeah, you, right now you can indent code as as you want. So you could have a for loop inside an if else statement. If you could have a if a statement inside a for loop, you could even have loops inside loops and all, right? So you could do something like for i n g for i n range. Let's say five, zero comma five for g. So And let's say zero comma i
so you could even uh, print something like oh, these patterns and all these are some patterns that you might have learned in uh, during your engineering or any basic programming course now blank print statement uh, of, of print statements like this that looks like this it does the same job it basically prints out the uh, blank uh, new line to be precise you could actually pass in either one two or three arguments in a range function if you do something like this it works as well so basically there are uh, you have to pass in three arguments that would be the let's say start then the end and the step size okay but the default value for start is already zero and the default step size is already one so even if you pass this uh, one argument if you want to want uh, you know to count from zero it's going to work fine but at max you can pass in three arguments that's what i did so here's uh, something you can do you could do you know so there's this loop inside a loop and all you could even add some if else statements uh, if you want that totally depends on the solution that you're trying to achieve that uh, the problem you're uh, you know trying to solve using python okay so now that's great we have all, already learned that so right now we have learned a lot of stuff and let's act, now try to implement all of that okay so you might have heard me saying that this is a print function it looks some something like this it takes in an argument or something right and it does it does something as well so are there uh, like just just these finite numbers of function that we can use or can we create our own functions as well because right now we have learned that we can uh, implement our own logic in python so it would be really great if we could also create something like this right so like uh, like for example if i want to do something a lot of a bunch of times so every time you input a number i want to print that pattern of stars that uh, we did Okay. Yeah, I could do that for you. Wait, just wait a second, uh, Suraj. Uh, Suraj, it works for you. If uh, does it work for you? So I'm going from zero to five uh, in I. Then I'm going for, from zero to five in J as well. And then I'm checking if uh, J is less than I. I print a star. so that's uh, how it goes on i hope it's fine with you guys so in this uh, in this way so now it might be confusing for some of you guys how it's printing stars and all so let's actually see it now instead of printing a star i would like to print j and with a space i would like to print i so it looks something like this so right now the value of uh, just a sec i'll even uh, omit this print statement right now i'll just print in j so here's how the iteration looks like it's the zeroth iteration for i so right now the value of i is 0 and j goes from 0 1 2 3 4 0 1 2 3 4 uh, so for every iteration uh, of i j goes through five iterations right so when i is 0 j goes from 0 to 5 and i is 1 j goes from 0 0 to 4 as well so it keeps on going so that's how uh, indented loops go on so for uh, each uh, one iteration of i j goes through all these iterations okay. so i ho hope that's fine as well and now if you actually print something like this like a, a pendulum logic like this so i you see i get the same outputs right 
and if I want to increase the range, I could go, do something like this. It goes from zero and uh, all this. Any questions or uh, now can we move on to functions? So I'm just going to comment out this code for now. So now you see if I execute it, nothing happens because all this code has now been commented out. Right, so uh, every code has now been uh, commented out so nothing executes. And now let's say, okay, yeah. So now let's say I want to take input from you guys. And every time you print a uh, enter a number, that's an even number. I want to print uh, print uh, this pattern of stars. And if it's an odd number, uh, so and if it's an odd number, so I would uh, you know say that it's just an odd number, something like that. What could I do? The first thing would be to take a number from you guys. You know, right. Enter the number and uh, then you know use a while loop or something. So what use a then use a while loop and print it all. Now what if I want to do make it this dynamic as well? So instead of just hard coding it, I want to change it every time that you enter this number. So I'll have to do something like this num and num, right? And then execute it. I, if I press 10, yes. and learn about functions. Functions are just these block of codes that, that can be executed mul multiple times. Okay, we've already seen functions like print so, and input. We've all, also seen range. So anything uh, that has these parentheses with them, be it any argument because we pass something like this in range. So be it an argument or not, all of these are functions. <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah, you could also change the shape of the pattern. Uh, that's something you can try on your own. Let me know if there's a problem. Because, and you could also find a lot of pattern programming questions uh, online if you want. Okay. So let's actually try that. So to define a function in Python, what you want to do is, first of all, we use a specific keyword. Just like if and else and for and while are all keywords, there's another, um, Predefined keyword in Python, that's the def. Def is basically used to define. It's a short for define, right? So now I could say def and then pass in a fu function name. Uh, yes, uh, you can also change the size of a pattern. Okay. So it's def that then you pass a function name, let's say um, foo, just a placeholder. You do something like this. And then write something like this. Okay. So that's how you can uh, create functions in Python. And then inside this, you can actually um, write something, do something using a print statement. Let's say uh, right now, I'll be using a print statement uh, sure, to print something in here. So let's actually type in the I would say my function. Okay. It's done. Now if I execute it, nothing happens actually, right? You would see that nothing actually happens. And the reason is that we have only only uh, described or defined our function. We have never executed it. We have never called it. Just like we used the print statement or the input statement, we need to call our function. And here's how we call our function. So now you see, it prints out my function. And that's because of this foo. Right? 
so now let's uh, try in another function a better function it's a pattern okay and now you'll also see that how a function can actually take in arguments so i'll take one argument that would be let's say i now based on that okay not i actually let's say rows so now based on that, what I want to do is I want to do something like for i in range row for j in range uh, i. I print something like print all these asterisks, provide it with an end so that it doesn't actually end up in the new line every time. something like this so now uh, anyone can tell me how i can actually call this function how should i call the, this pattern function that i just created so right now we know that uh, we need to do something like this right but if i do this i get an i actually get an error and the error is a uh, pretty self explanatory it tells you that pattern is missing one positional argument or something so the num row is basically missing it needs a row, right? So if I type in five, you see, it prints out uh, a pattern with uh, you know, five rows. Let's make it I plus one actually. You get all these rows then. And if you enter something like 10, it has this bigger pattern. You could go, you, you could even go up to 100. You would get this uh, weird looking, but beautiful, beautiful pattern. So now, instead of writing my code again and again for different numbers, to run the to run the program, you could either use a control enter or shift enter, whatever you prefer. Shift enter uh, basically creates a, executes your code and creates a new line for you, and control enter just executes the program. Or you could uh, press this run button as well. So now we can use our function uh, as you uh, just the way we want. <clears throat> Apart from that, we can also create a multiple a different type of function. Right now, that uh, that's how you say that it's going to be it's going to take two uh, numbers okay and then you can actually return something instead of just printing it you can return return n1 plus n2 and now you can use your function using an e equals to operator how do i do that let's say z equals to add 10 comma 20 and then if i want to print z you see i print i get 30. now that's because you pass these arguments to 10 comma 20 and then our add simple add function that only returns something basically returns you a value and the value would be n1 plus n2 so now uh it takes in 10 and 20 adds them it's 30 and then it returns 30. And this return uh, and the value returned by this function is then assigned to my variable z using this assignment operator, right? That's what we learned. So now you can create your own functions, little handy functions for adding, subtracting, and not doing all that stuff. Okay. So, um, any questions uh, regarding these functions? I hope I'm not boring you guys like uh, they were, the attendance was uh, bigger today, uh, yesterday and now it's, uh, you know, deteriorating or something. I don't even uh, see a lot of you guys being active in the comments right now. Do you have any, uh, any questions or anything?
price. Uh, yeah, you could write n1 and n2, but uh, then it wouldn't. It won't return the right. So, yeah, let's also see that. So, if a function doesn't actually return something, what happens? You get none. Because apparently, if your function doesn't return something, the default return value is none because it it, it basically is, uh, is Python's way of saying that your uh, function returns nothing. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> just a sec. Yeah, I'm really sorry. Just having some bad cough. That's it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, no, not actually Corona, but uh, you know. Okay. About your question. About that uh, question of printing the reverse pattern of stars or something. So, yeah, we could do that actually. That's what you want. Now, there's this, uh, there's this simple way of doing it as well. Let me try, right? <clears throat> So let's say four, five, and let's say five, and let's say five. So let's actually see what what's happening and uh, when exactly uh, we don't need to print all the variables, right? So. Ouch. Let's just start and put an end to it. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, sorry. This prints that uh, prints a lot of blank lines in here. So we could do something like uh, let's see. What is there? We see all these patterns. Now what we need to do is that we need to start omitting these, right? We could either use FLs or something to actually omit them. And from you guys, you could also help me. So basically for the first line, it's fine. For the second line, <clears throat> I actually need to check, right? So I could go up to some lines and all. So any, any suggestions from you guys? You could even uh, use the numbers uh, right now to actually check it out. So it would have, it helps. Sometimes it also helps to check out the numbers. So I go from zero, zero, one, two, three, four, then I only need to go to zero, one, two, three. Then zero, okay, then it's gonna be zero, one, and two, right? So what could be the logic in here? Anyone? Hello? You want to uh, make, just uh, let me know if I'm audible, right? I'm not getting, getting any response. Yes, you are audible, yes, you are audible. Okay, yeah. Okay. If uh, I is greater than J, then we could print J. That's one suggestion. Let me see that. So someone said that if uh, I is actually greater than J, let's uh, just try with J first. And if J works, then we can all, all, always, uh, you know, convert it to a star. But 
it's the same pattern that we used uh, again earlier, right? So now instead of that, what you guys are, are not focusing on is that I need to take it from reverse, right? I need to take it from reverse. So now since my I goes from uh, zero to five, I need to go from four because uh, five is not included, right? And then uh, where do I want to go to? I want to go to, let's say I minus one. That's when I would be included, right? Since the upper limit is not included. Then how I, how I want to go? I want to go something like this minus one. Now let's see if it works or not. I could print, try printing J. Oh, sorry. And equals to, I could print something like this, right? Now it makes sense. I hope, hopefully it makes some sense. And now you could uh, just uh, substitute it with a star. Right, it might work for you. So the idea in printing the pattern of stars would be, don't just uh, rush into printing all that. First of all, check your, uh, check how it uh, behaves, right? What would be the relation between them and all? And then once you have actually done that, you could figure out your code on, on your own. Um, I don't remember who actually asked the question. Uh, Suraj uh, for J equals to five for J in green, J minus one won't actually make a lot of sense in here because the names of the variables have been repeated. And I guess parts was uh, really close to the answer. Uh, just, you just need to keep that in mind that it goes from zero to five. That means it goes from zero to one, two, three, and four. Five is not included. So uh, Suraj, I hope it actually, you know, answers your question. So uh, now, uh, now I hope uh, that we can move on and, you know, cover something else. Any other question? Any other doubt from you guys? So now let's try something uh, stupid. Let's, uh, for a moment here, let's try something stupid and let's write something like print one divided by zero. What do you guys think would be the output, would the output be? So, because right now I'm dividing one by zero. Any idea what's going to happen? Hello? Divide by someone says divide by zero and all, so someone says zero, it could have been infinity or something. But if I execute it, you see, I actually get an error. And that error basically means that it can't divide by zero, right? It throws you an uh, error. And these, this is something, and this is something that can happen to your code any, any time. Let's suppose the calculator uh, or the basic arithmetic operations that we've created the first day, right? You might think that it's gonna work, but if someone adds something like a division by zero or, uh, you know, uh, invalid values, then it's gonna, it's always gonna throw you an error. In the same way, if I say x equals to int, then I input and I say enter, enter a number. This, uh, this is there are a lot of errors in Python that one would be syntax error, that then there would be division by zero error, there would be invalid invalid value passed, and there are a lot of uh, them. You don't actually need to memorize all of them. Uh, I could send you a list of that, but the important ones would be arithmetic error. That's uh, that would be zero division error, and then out of bounds and all. Okay. So I'll cover the most, uh, you know, faced errors, the commonly er the errors that occur. And uh, we could actually see how we can bypass you know, them, right? So let's say that uh, I take a number as an input and then I just try to print it. Print. Let's use an F string here. Q E N T E R E D. You enter X. It's fine. It's going to work really fine. 
right it totally works fine but what if i enter something like this boom it gives you a value error right so now this is these behaviors these unexpected behaviors can actually result in your code breaking so right now we'll actually see how we can handle these errors and exceptions and it's known as exception handling the first would be try the second would be accept third would be finally okay these are the three key uh, keywords or state uh, you know blocks that would actually help you so now what you need to do is if you if you think that there is a possibility of a particular statement throwing an error let's say this particular statement print 1 by 0 if you think there's this possibility that it could throw an error what you need to do it instead of writing it just like this you need to write it like this you need to write it inside a try try block so try colon then indentation and now print let's say 1 by 0 okay and following the try block there there should always be the accept block accept block always follows the try block <clears throat> yeah as i said the accept block always follows the try block and you could say write something like print division by zero not supported right so now you see instead of getting that huge error that i got earlier Let's also see how the error looks like. Yeah, except uh, except works as catch. It's just a fancier way of writing catch. There is no catch uh, keyword in Python. There's this except keyword. You see, I used to earlier I got this error, and uh, the rest of my code doesn't even get executed. But let's just comment this out. Now you see. it doesn't actually throw me an error rather it does what it what been written in the accept uh, block i could even write like some something like hi and it would totally work right just in case your code throws an error uh, sangeeta i uh, i i would uh, cover that uh, just at the last right so in case you have any doubt i could just uh, give you 5 10 minutes extra and uh, we could just revise that right let's uh, for now cover the uh, exception handling so that's how you can do it so now instead of writing all that code like that i could try put i could say enter a number one thing Sorry. You entered. Let's say number. Right. You entered number, and then in the accept block, in the accept block, just in case you had you got an error, you could write something like print. this enter number right now if i try this first of all let's try entering a valid number it says you entered 10 that's great if i print something like this now it says please enter a number and now it doesn't break actually break my code and doesn't throw me an error and that would be try and accept block now there's this third block that i told you about it's finally now no matter if your code throws uh, if your code throws an exception or not finally is something that would always get executed <coughs> sorry and say finally so now you see if i enter valid number you see you enter 10 and then it's inside finally if you get an error let's say i print enter something like this it it executes the accept block 
and then also it, it uh, enters finally, right? So finally block, so at the rest of your code, if you're writing an error that would be prone to errors, what you need to do is write any, write any statements that you think could actually throw you an error, okay, that you think could throw you an error inside a try block, write an exception case to it, and then write the rest of your code inside the finally block. That way your code will never break and you would uh, write a bug free code. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I'm open to your questions right now. Okay, that's great. Now there's something uh, that you need to keep in mind to this try accept and finally block. You could also attach an else block. Let's see what an else block does. Now this else block is not an if else while a block. It's a totally different block. And we'll see how it works. Execute this. Now you see, I, when I execute my code, it goes into the try block. It executes my code and if there is no exception, if there is no exception and you have provided an else block, then the code inside the else block will be, uh, will be executed. And if there is an ex exception, you see the else block is not executed. So you could even find out if there had been, an, if there was an ex exception or not using this else block. Sorry. So if you enter a number, you see you enter 9999 and whatever, and then you would see that you did enter the number because no exception occurred. So if there was an exception, this else block won't get executed. But if there was not an exception, this uh, there was an exception, this else block won't be executed. Okay, so that's how this else block uh, works. This is totally optional. This else block is totally optional. and uh, most of the tutorials don't even cover it, but uh, there's this handle trick that you can uh, use to check if there is uh, an exception or not. If an exception actually occurred or not, right? And if you print something like this, it works. Right, else after try. Okay. That's, uh, but actually that's uh, not how you write it, right? Just to let you know. You have to follow this uh, particular hierarchy. Try, accept, else, then finally. Finally always has to be the last one. Okay. Else uh, you'll get a lot of uh, syntax errors or something. So you need to uh, actually follow this hierarchy. Try should be always the first one. And ex uh, followed by accept. Accept should al always follow um, the try block. Accept is an, uh, else is an uh, optional block but you need to write it, uh, you know, below except, and then finally would be the last block that you write it. Yeah, else uh, kind of works opposite to accept. So any other questions from your side? Yeah. So now uh, back to some, I guess, Sangeeta's question. We were basically printing a pattern of stars. So what we did was, let's go back to the code actually. So Sangeeta, uh, when you got disconnected or something, uh, the only stuff that we covered was uh, basically print this reverse pattern of stars. And that's how we achieved it. So we had our first loop. And then instead of going from uh, 
zero to i, we went the opposite. We went the opposite. So since i goes from zero to four, right? Five is not in included. So it goes from zero to four. So the opposite would be four to i, right? Or four to zero to be precise. So it goes from four to i minus one because i when i write i minus one, then it goes up to i. Again, i minus one is not included in the reverse order, and then we print this uh, reverse pattern of stars. To answer Mohit's question, uh, what kind of uh, yeah, Sangeet, that's fine. So, Mohit, what exactly what kind of apps are we talking about? Are you talking about websites and all, or uh, mobile apps or something? Please just uh, be more precise. Websites, yeah, you could uh, use something known as the Flask or the Django framework to create websites uh, using Python. That would be the backend. The front end always has to be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But for the backend, there are two uh, big frameworks that you could use. The first would be Flask, F L A S K. And the second would be Django, B G A N G O, Django. Right. They are uh, two uh, big, huge MVC frameworks that you can use. And I would be happy to take a web webinar uh, on you know using Flask or Django. Uh, that would that would that's totally out of the you know the course uh, of this uh, webinar. Mohit. Yeah, <clears throat> I would be happy. I would uh, be happy to take a, a dedicated webinar to that, but that's uh, totally out of the course right now. The first would be Flask, the second would be Django. You take it. So, any other questions, or uh, that would be it for today, I guess. Tomorrow will be the last day of our webinar, right? So, tomorrow we'll be we'll building the course project. For apps like Android apps, first of all, uh, this database connect. Uh, you could use any uh, any database, SQL, MongoDB, um, SQLite. You could use any one of them. For apps, uh, Rakshit, people don't actually prefer building apps for Python. That's just a performance issue. But if you want to do that anyways, you can learn something about the Kiwi framework. Kiwi is basically a framework that uh, lets you Build uh, applications in Python. Yeah, I already wrote uh, all the names in uh, the chat box. Cybersecurity, cybersecurity is uh, something totally different. You need penetration testing and all. For that, you need to write uh, scripts. You could write scripts in anything. You could even write the scripts in Python. Uh, but for that, you need a better concept of cybersecurity uh, than in Python. Yeah, about the databases, uh, you could use, uh, you know. SQL. I'll be writing that in the comments as well. MongoDB or SQLite. So if it's uh, fine with you guys, and if it's done, so okay. Okay. So yeah, Ritam, it was a great session indeed, and uh, hope you guys have enjoyed a lot. About the session. So guys, uh, as per the yeah session record. Okay, Sanjeev, you are asking for these session recordings. Yeah, sessions have been uh, recorded, and uh, you will find the recordings on our YouTube channel. 